details about the officer I don't have any update other than was given uh, at the hospital and since it's under investigation you know I can't speak about the details of the incident I can say um, upon learning uh, as, as uh, different things are coming out um, there's no acceptable explanation for why live rounds were at a training exercise and I was so angry, I was almost speechless to think that something like this uh, could happen. I made the commitment to uh, the trainee's family that we would get to the bottom of it. The commissioner is working with the state police for the investigation. Um, it shouldn't have happened. And with respect to the suspensions, yeah, I have full confidence that uh, the commissioner who is more than just angry, he's determined to make sure that we get to the bottom of it, to make sure that nothing like this ever happens again, is taking the correct actions. I'd like to ask about two uh, school-related issues. Mm -hmm. um, the first is, uh, this week it came out that um, the city's uh, graduation rate has remained stagnant over the past four years, but improved by 3% in the past year. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get your thoughts about whether enough's being done to make sure kids uh, are dropping out of school. Yeah, I, I think it's one of those things, if you have one kid that drops out, that's too many. Uh, because I know that there's some way, in every path is not uh, for every child, but there is a path for every child, and that's what we should, be, uh, that's what we should look for. I know that, the, uh, that Dr. Alonzo has done a lot to try to uh, reach uh, what, it's what the young people are called disconnected youth or unconnected uh, youth, young people who have uh, fallen, uh, you know, who have slipped through the cracks and try to get them back uh, into the school system. But that is, that is work that has to continue. We have to look for um, new ways, different ways to get these kids to finish their education so they have an opportunity uh, to become productive members of society. I don't think we serve the young people or our greater community when we don't do that, um, make that extra push. And the other matter I'd like to ask about is the charter school vote last night. Mm -hmm. um, several were uh, uh, selected to be closed, mm -hmm. including um, uh, Bluford East, um, which we had highlighted uh, a little bit as having all sorts of financial problems. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to get your thoughts on that vote and, and I guess it's, it's your thoughts on charter schools generally and how they're performing. I think charter schools uh, are much the same as our uh, regular uh, public schools. There are some that are performing exceptionally well and some that are having challenges. Uh, and just because it has a label of charter school doesn't mean that they won't be held accountable for student performance and for, uh, the, and, and for managing the finances uh, that are uh, provided to them for students' education. So, you know, I expect just as we hold our uh, regular uh, public schools accountable for achievement and uh, management that we should hold uh, the charter schools to a, a, uh, a similar standard, and that's what's, that's what's happening. I mean, there's been a lot of um, questions thrown at us about the trash um, fee. Mm -hmm. Later, these details, do you have any details now that you can give in terms of more details about how exactly this will work for the fees that you can charge? So, there, the uh, details are just what I proposed, that this is a proposal. Uh, you know, just as many of the things in the 10-year plan are, are proposals, this is, a, this is a path forward. I think it's important when you think about uh, being competitive with our, uh, with our tax rate, we have to look at how other jurisdictions in which we're being uh, compared to uh, tax and uh, pay for different services. Many jurisdictions, uh, I think most, uh, have a fee for trash service. It's not included as a part of their property tax. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things where their, their property tax is either artificially low or ours is artificially high. My goal is to get us on an even, um, uh, even, even keel. So if there's a comparison of one county, to, uh, one jurisdiction to the other, that it's a fair comparison. Additionally, you know, we're looking for sustainable models for trash collection and you know, different people have different trash needs, and 
putting this uh, sanitation fee in place will give us an opportunity to look for ways that we can, you know, if, if you are a heavy recycler and barely have any trash, you know, is there a way to compensate, you know, or to, to offset your uh, expenses for your trash? It's just, um, we have to find a, a better way to do it, and that's what, um, the, that's just one part of the plan to get there. So does that mean in uh, detail, no specifics yet. Uh, you know, all of those things need to be hashed out. What I lay forward is a, is a plan to help us reduce costs and to be more competitive when it comes to our property tax rate. The details is what we you know we have to hash out over the uh, next months. One more question, please. And um, uh, in terms of uh, my understanding is that this is that one of the big um, drivers behind this is to get the nonprofits who. Um, don't pay any property tax right now to contribute to the city finances. Um, you know, how important is it to come with creative ways to get that segment of, of Baltimore contributing to, to the bottom line? So the main driver is getting uh, Baltimore's, uh, Baltimore City's fiscal foundation firm and making sure that our structural deficit isn't a legacy of my administration, that we get it under control and make the hard decisions now so we can have the future that we want for our families. That's a driver. And in uh, taking a look at what needs to be done, we have to look, just like we're looking at pensions and health care costs and wellness programs, we have to look at the fact that over $4 billion is uh, off the tax rolls because of not-for-profits. Do not-for-profits contribute uh, to our city? Of course they do jobs, resources, care, all of those things. But we cannot ignore the fact that more than $4 billion is off the tax roll. We have to come up with a solution. Baltimore is not unique in that, in that respect. There are many cities that uh, have taken a look, including Boston, uh, with their universities that are uh, off the tax roll. They've taken a look. All we're doing is putting that on the table as something that, if we continue in that path, we will uh, have an unsustainable uh, tax base, and we we have to balance the the tax paying property as well as uh, the non taxable property in order to have a firm foundation for the future. And then, uh, sorry, last one. The um, uh, when will the uh, trash fee um, go into effect? If you know, will We're, it be this year, next year. We don't have that that level of detail yet. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.